but I am going to, okay, thanks, Patrick. I just looked up and everything was over. So let me see if I can get this going again. It just ended on me. Let me, got to cut this and put it in Facebook. Hopefully you can find me. I don't know what happened, ladies. It just kind of, uh, I was just looking and then nothing was there, so I called my IT guy. But um, we're still ready to go. I am going to hoop up into, whoop, that's going to be too small. Let me get some, what's going on here? Okay, there we go. Barely big enough, but we'll make it work. So let me go ahead and hoop up in my hoop. Okay, so this is what you should have done. These should be um, ironed, and then you should have some of that Shape Flex on one side. Sorry about that, ladies. Don't have any idea what happened, but we're back up. So let's go over to the machine. You should have um, a piece of no-show in your 5x7, just like you did before. Just found you. I know. I have no idea what happened. So I was just, hopefully everyone else can find me too. I'm going to go finish embroidery. We are doing gift box number two. And I'm going to go home to clear my screen. I'm going to go embroidery. And we are doing a cup of chair quilt, and we're doing dimensional pockets. And this is the one that we're doing now, the one that has a 20 on it. Let's make sure nothing else has a 20. Go ahead and set it. That's where I start to get cocky and think I know what I'm doing. But uh, we're going to go ahead and stitch the gift box outline on stabilizer. It wants to use a color that you can see. I still have my blue in there, so I'm going to leave my blue. Yeah, sorry ladies, it just, all of a sudden the video was gone. And I was still talking to you as though, I don't know how long it had been gone. So hopefully you have your pieces prepped. This is gift box two. This is how I keep you on your toes, ladies. Find me on YouTube or find me on Facebook. So um, that is the outline. That is step number one right here. We've done all of this, or hopefully you've done that with me. Hopefully it just dropped after that. And now we're going to stitch the cut box. So go ahead and stitch the cut box. You can cut it any way you want. I'm going to use my rotary cutter again. My thread didn't catch for some reason. Let's make sure my tail was long enough. Sometimes it's that. I'm just going to go back and do that because that needs to be kind of precise. You want that. Okay, if you have to ever go back stitches, this is how you do it. You go to this button and I'm going to go to the beginning of that step, which is just right there. Let's try it again. Okay, we're going to cut that box and we're going to extend it a little bit just like we did before. I'll just do it right here instead of on my lap. No, 
and what it wanted it about three quarters of an inch longer I don't even know if it had to be three quarters of an inch longer just a little bit longer the first time I like I was pretty precise about it but this time let's just let's cut them out Okay, he is done. And let's read our directions. That was much faster, right? So we did all of that. Um, open up the box fabric with the fusible and we're gonna place it right side down. The fusible is gonna go on the right hand side. So we need this piece right here. There's my fusible, I know it's hard to see on this, and we're gonna go ahead and cover this right-hand side. This has to be at least big enough to fit in there. Mine, mine wasn't big enough. Okay. And I'm gonna just check and just make sure I'm lined up. And I am. Grab my tape. Okay, let's go ahead and slide it back on the machine. And then we're gonna stitch out that, the number on here. Well, it's gonna tack it down first. See, this is what I mean. I start to get all cocky and I think I know what I'm doing. Let's stick to the directions. So, stitch the cut box, remove the hoop, cut the stabilizer, open the box fabric with fusible backing, and place right side, aligning the crease with the right side of the cut box, completely covering the right half of the gift box outline. Stitch the gift box right, tack down line, Color does not make a difference, so let's go ahead and do that. So I still have my navy blue in there. Perfect. So right now it is doing this step right here, step three, where it's stitching right there and right there. And then it wants you to tape around the entire perimeter of the fabric to reduce puckering. Okay. Did we do that on the last one? Maybe I accidentally forgot that step. No, they didn't have you do that on the last one. Okay, they want you to do it on the whole thing. So there must have been a lot of puckering with this. So... Um, we are going to, yeah, tape around the entire perimeter, and then they want you to stitch the, um, stitch the 20. And they're talking about, like, the whole thing. So let's go ahead and slide this, get your tape. That 20 must really want to make it pull. I mean, we I got a decent amount of pulling just from the number one. That was, I'm gonna put another piece right here because that's the important spot. We're gonna go ahead and they want you to stitch that out in red. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my thread if you want to put in a matching bobbin, you can. I'm just going to leave it. But let's get your red out. And it says stitch the Avent number.
Here we go. Let's see how this goes. Maybe I'll just assist it a little bit too. right now and it's stitching your number down right here then we're going to do our little tuck tuck and tape looks great go ahead and we're gonna have to take this off because we're gonna have to tuck that don't worry this will all get used or you can throw it all away whatever works for you Fold it over, fold it back, and then go ahead and this was another scrap in my pile. So this is like feasible no show, but it won't make a difference for this project. So I'm just using it. That's why it's shiny on the back. I just pulled everything out of my scrap then. All right. So, um, tape the corners in place, and now we're going to stitch stitch the gift box right back, tack down line, and color does not make a difference, so I'm just going to leave that red in. We're going to do the right lid placement line, and it says that color doesn't make a difference, but I'm going to go ahead and put that green in right now. Let me put my green back in. It feels so good to get this started. my placement line you're gonna grab one of these pieces the ones with that we put the little fold in it right, we're gonna place this down here you're gonna hold it to fold just put one piece of tape on the top we're gonna do the tack down right here. This is for the other side. How are we doing ladies, you good? Okay, so this piece is gonna go down. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna place it down. 
and line up that fold with the cut line on that left side. I think I'm lined up good. Get a piece of tape and tape it down on the top and the bottom. Okay, I never use this much tape, right? You know me, I'm a sprayer. Feels strange to be doing all this taping. Am I lined up? I'm lined up. Okay. And um, now it wants to, so that was, uh, where are we? Oh, we got to tuck the right side too. I always forget this one you need to tuck before we stitch because there's nothing getting tucked, stitched on the front part. So we're just going to tuck them in. We're going to fold it. I feel like my zipper is not lined up. Like that. This needs to be pulled back a little more compared to the other side. There we go. And then we should go ahead and tape down the corners in the back just to make sure those don't come undone. This is not over far enough. My zipper doesn't look even. I think it would be fine and it would look fine, but I just want to pull this over a little bit more. There we go. That's better. Okay, I'm going to fold it back to the front. So we just did this step right here. I folded it back, to the back, um, taped the corners, turned the hoop to the front. Place tape across the box cut in the stabilizer to prevent the presser foot from catching. Which is so funny because they didn't have us do any of this in the other one. And um, maybe it does something a little different. I don't know. So I'll go ahead and just... But I don't think that foot is going to scoop under there. But we'll just put it down anyways. And then stitch the gift box left tack down line and remove all the tape. Alright. Let's do it. Yeah, you can watch the whole sew along and um and Linda if you uh if you look there's um I put together all sorts of special stuff for you ladies so there's gonna be so it says to remove all your tape um there's a spreadsheet so you can find the spreadsheet which tells you our agenda and what we're going to be working on and I've told the ladies that is a living document so as I um as we progress like it may change you know, I may add things to it or enhance it or fix it or, you know, do whatever to make it better. So I don't even know if you needed that tape on the left-hand side, to be honest, but we did it. We'll follow the instructions. When we get into the quilting and everything, I'm doing things a little bit differently. I had you this time cut your batting. Uh, somebody suggested that we cut the batting just the end size, which will save us some steps. And I was like, yeah, why don't we do it? I think the reason I haven't done it yet is I don't want to confuse you. So especially if it's your first quilt, I don't want to confuse you and lead you astray. But maybe it's easier this way. You'll just learn it this way to start with and it'll be... A way that'll help save a little time okay so this is where are we at right now I think we just went ahead and removed all the tape stitch the left tack down remove all the tape and now we're gonna stitch the left lid placement line so let's do that you're gonna grab your other piece of fabric that looks like this and it should be pressed down yeah, and you can watch them later and whatever you don't get done in the sew alongs, I will send you a little video. Okay, I can't do it anymore. I'm a sprayer. So 
I have, um, I'm just going to be spraying over here. I have a spray tent over here. And do you like that? Doesn't look so pretty? I change this out every once in a while. But I'm going to be spraying over here and then putting my pieces in. So I'm just going to, I never spray on the right side of the fabric. That's one thing you don't want to do is don't spray on the right side of the fabric. And you don't want to, this is my um, Aquanet plug. You do not want to spray like Aquanet style. Like in the 80s when you were making your hair, when it was a competition to make your hair as big as possible. You don't want to do that. So this is the tack down. You just want a little spray. Just so it's going to stick. We're stitching the left lid tack down line. And now we're going to trim. Just like we did on the other one, we're going to trim, but we're only trimming along the bottom and we're extending that line like it's imaginary and it goes all the way across. And then we're going to do our satin stitch. So if you have snips, I find your sheet to print out. So if you go to our Facebook page, and it's in our sew along group. It's A1 Vacuum and Sewing and uh, um, on Facebook. And I post all the things there, all the videos, um, like for whatever we don't get in, done in class, that is also going to get posted. I post it to the sew along group because some people don't do YouTube. And then I paste it to YouTube because some people don't do Facebook. I'm going to slide this back on. You're going to do the satin stitch that's going to go across. So I, I post it in both places. Oh, and let's talk ladies, because next week, I know I'm I'm trying to do these on, on Mondays. We're closed on Mondays, so it's kind of a good day for me to do them. However, I'm going to be in Denver with my kids. Um, I'm going to be in Denver with my kids looking at colleges on Mondays, and if I could bring my machine, I would do it, but, you know, it's kind of big. Hang on just a second. I'm going to look at the calendar. So, and Linda, if you can't find it in either of those two spots, email me. And I'm going to put my, e I'm going to throw my email address into the chat. You can just email me and I will email you the spreadsheet. Into chat. address in there so you can email me and I will send that to you. Ooh, we're going to get ready to put our zipper in, ladies. So get your red zipper. I almost sold the last embellishment kit. I made sure everyone's kit was filled and then I always fill mine last. And I had one left and I almost sold it because I forgot I didn't have one. So I was lucky I went, oh, wait a minute. I'll get you yours next week because I need this one. So um, that was just, what was that? That was step number 11 to stitch the lid bottom, bottom satin outline. Now we're going to place the zipper. And it looks like the instructions are exactly the same as before. So just get some tape and we're going to tape it down and then we are going to tack it down. So here is your zipper. Make sure that the pull is going to be at the top outside of the sew area. You're just going to kind of center it. What you don't want is this close where the foot could. The scariest thing is when your foot hits a zipper. That's like scary. How do I know? Well, <laughs> you know. 
sometimes you and that's one of those learning experiences you always have to watch out for this little guy too because you don't want you don't want the uh foot or the needle to hit that either i've done a lot of in the pouch zipper bags let's just leave it at that okay tape that down and then you're going to tape it down on the very top i'm going to fold it back again just make sure i'm lined up looks good it's going to be adorable I mean it when I say this is going to be heirloom. And if you want another kit, I did order more. Um, I won't have them, I don't think, until the end of August or something like that. Okay, color does make a difference for this stitch out. It wants you to use the red. <clears throat> but I'm going to do this one, and I'm sure I'm going to have to do another one because I have to do one for both kids. And then when there's grandkids... You need one for like each household and then they can fight over it and then your kids can learn how to sew and they can make their own right here we go just do your tack down after we do this we're going to remove the tape and the block from the hoop and then we're going to trim all the excess stabilizer only. I love Christmas. When it's um when Thanksgiving comes cuz we start playing Christmas music in the store. Patrick likes to think Patrick thinks it's a dance party. So he likes to play dance music in the store when we put music on sometimes we just forget but um i love putting on christmas music i never get sick of all those songs all the old time songs that you know you grew up hearing okay let's go ahead we are going to what time is it let's do a little bit more and then we can take a break and if you need to take a break well let me know but here we go. Put this away. We are just going to trim the stabilizer. We're going to remove all the tape. I like to use my tweezers. Patrick got me a, um, a, a special speaker, which I love because I can kind of walk around the room and it picks up it's so great. It's amazing how it just picks up everything. Before I used to have to speak directly because I film on my phone. I used to have to speak directly into that. All right. And again, yours yours probably isn't going to be shiny. Mine is shiny just because I'm using up some feasible no-show that I already had cut. I like fusible no show when I'm doing like t-shirts or onesies or something stretchy. I wonder if I can um maybe when I when this video is posted I could put a link in to the spreadsheet I'm not sure I'm really not tech savvy all right this one go ahead and clip it back to the rest of your stuff I love this pocket this is just the cutest thing ever let's unzip it look how cute that is Oh my goodness, I can't wait to stitch it down. It's gonna be so cute. Okay, here's gift box number two, so you know what it is, and it's ready to go when we go to do the rest of it. Let's toss this over here. All right, tidy. Okay, do your little quick tidying up. And let's look at the next sheet. Are we all there? I think everyone's here. So we are gonna go ahead, we have tan house, here we go, tan house and red house. And I wrote that we're gonna stitch both the, ten, the tan and the red house windows in the same four by four hooping. So let's grab your four by four hoop. I actually um, 
Where did I put mine? I tossed mine to the side because I was like, oh, I'm done with that. Hang on. Here it is. These are tiny. These are just going to be the little windows. Let me put this to the side. Let's get a piece of stabilizer. There's a little piece. This was too small for my other hoop. And just hoop up in here. All right, and let's go ahead and look at our directions and let me grab my um, my pieces for this. So this is my red house and my tan house. And um, we need to look at page 47 for, nope, 52, 52 for the tan house. And the spreadsheet's just made to make your life easier. I know it can look overwhelming. Like, this is big. There's a lot of stuff on this spreadsheet. They usually aren't this big. Like, if you look at my spreadsheet from, um, I had my one over here from, uh, is this it? Like, this is the one from Two Scoops. And if you want any of these spreadsheets, they're all on our Sew Along site for all. I, I think I probably have been making them maybe this is like the fifth or sixth project but there's a bunch of them on there so it's usually not too complicated and then i'll make some recommendations and tell you what we're going to be doing this one since the project is so big it's it's big and there's a lot of information on here so um so we are going to go ahead and it says here let's see what our prep is going to be let's turn on our iron because we're going to be fusing some stuff and um it says, uh, cut your stabilizer larger than embroidery, embroidery hoop, hoop and stabilizer only. We are going to fold the window pocket fabric in half widthwise. So the window pocket fabric is two inches by four and a half inches. And it is a little, um, it's the little white fabric. Now two, your window is going to be a pocket on one of these, but just one of the windows. So hopefully that makes sense for you. So we're doing the tan house first. You're looking for the piece of fabric that is two inches by four and a half inches. So it's gonna be this one right here. It should be the white with the polka dots on it, the tiny little polka dots. And when in doubt, I always grab my, um, I'll just grab a ruler or something like that and just measure it and just go, okay, am I, did I really grab the right, right piece? That's two inches and that is four and a half inches. So this is the right piece right here. So it says fold the window pocket in half widthwise, wrong sides together and lightly press. And I think we're gonna do that for the other house too. If you look at the red house, that's on page 55. 55, fold the window pocket in half widthwise and that two oh that one's a little bit different that one's two inches by five inches don't get these fit mixed up one's a little bit longer one's four and a half and one is five. Oh, did i did i cut them the same size looks like i did but it'll be okay it's like a quarter inch on either side so i'm going to go ahead and press these All right, um, I don't think we're putting any shape flex or anything on these. So we should be ready to go. You just needed to go ahead and press both of these. All right, let's go ahead and load the designs on the machine. Hi, Miss Terry, good to see you. All right, let's load up both our windows. They're both tiny, so that's why we're doing them all in one hooping. Time to tidy over here too. Tape. All right, I'm gonna grab my hoop. Let me go ahead and slide that on the machine. Oh, you know what happened? So sometimes if your design is still loaded here, it's gonna tell you to change to a larger hoop because I still have a five by seven design on there. So you just lift this up and slide it back a little bit and 
he won't know it's on there anymore. All right, let's go ahead and go home. And let's pick out our designs. We're gonna do this one first. So tan house part A, get embroidery. Cup of chair, dimensional pockets. So he is not here. Let's see where I'm gonna find him. He's a four by four tan house part A. Tan house part A. Yeah, he's not, whoops. And you know you don't have to hit that button. Sometimes I forget there's a quicker way. Um, oh, house blocks. There we go. All right, because I could have hit that little button just to go back one screen. So this is tan house. Let's just make sure I'm looking at him and that one's right. We're going to do this one. Go ahead and set it. And I'm also going to choose the right hoop size so I know how much room I have. This is how much room I have for a 5 by 7 I'm going to go up here and let's choose 4x4. Four four. That way I can just move him up a little bit right to here. And then we're going to add. Let's go to house blocks. And now we're going to get red house. That's the other window we want. And that's just going to save us on hoopings. So I'm going to just go edit, move. I'm just going to use this this way. Okay, so I have one at the top, one at the bottom. That's going to save us having to hoop up another thing, a stabilizer. Let's go ahead and say okay. And embroidery, I didn't color group, so it's just going to do one and then the other. Um, I guess there's different colors there. Let's go, why don't we go ahead and we can color group. So it's going to do all the placement and all the... We just have to pay attention to the instructions. So I can go here to layout, and that's my color grouping button. That means it's going to do the placement lines all at the same time, and then it'll do the tack downs at the same time. So this is your color group button. So now it's going to do those at the same time, and then it'll do the tan on its own and the red on its own. Where is that? That's, that is red. All right, we're good to go. I'm going to hit this button again, so it's going to show me what's stitching out first. Let's see our instructions. So our instructions say, we did this part, we loaded our design, stitch the window pocket placement line, open the window, and it says to do it in a visible color, but I don't wanna do red because I don't want that to shadow behind the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me just put some light gray in. It's my go-to color to be seen, but not too bright. I'm going to put gray in, and I'm going to let it stitch both of those uh, placement lines. How are we, ladies? Hopefully that's not too confusing what we're doing right now. We're just doing two windows at once in one hooping. If you, uh, not all machines have color grouping, so your mach machine might not have that feature. And then you would just stitch one out at a time. So stitch the window pocket placement line, open the window pocket fabric and place right side up, aligning the crease with the top of the stitched window box, completely covering the bottom of the window pocket outline. Oh, you know what? It really is better to do these one at a time because I'm gonna have my fabric from one folded on top, so I might fast forward or stop things in between. I'll just leave it like this, but you could do them separately. What you don't wanna have is you don't wanna have this fabric that I fold up in the way of the other one. I'm gonna grab my pocket fabric. And it did want those pressed wrong sides together which I did do but make sure you have wrong sides together if you don't it's not the end of the world you can repress them or just leave them I mean you really it's going to be hard for you to see that okay so um open the window pocket fabric and place right side up aligning the crease with the top of the stitch box completely 
covering the bottom of the window pocket outline. So it's going to look like this. We're going to put it down just like that. Okay. I'm just going to give mine a little shot of spray and then I'll put it down. Where's my spray? Well, I can't see the spray, so I'm going to tape it. And you're going to learn, if you don't know me, I am queen of losing everything. And it's it's really like a superpower because I, I just don't know anyone who's, oh, I see it, who's quite as good at it, who's better than me. So we are, are putting it... Um, And place right sides up. Okay, I am right side up. I'm peeking under here to make sure. Let's do that. I'm gonna move it over a smidge. And then it's gonna to wanna to do the other one. I'm gonna tape them down and then I'll just move the fabric out of the way. How are we doing, ladies? I'll just move this back when it's stitching that, but you do have to watch out for that. It's gonna overlap. Here we go. We'll just fold this back for it to do this step. This is just going to be, uh, let me just confirm, but this is the pocket window tack down. So that's going to be okay. We're just going to go ahead and let it do this. And then once it does this one, I'll let this other one kind of flip up. Okay, I'm gonna flip this guy up so it's not in the way of this. I'm gonna have to fold him out of the way when it does the window pane detail. Oh, look how tiny that one is. That's like an itty bitty. I probably could have, um, I could have maybe done, um, no, because of the placement line, I couldn't have done that, but I was like, maybe I could have done them side by side. All right, now we're going to do this window pane. I'm just going to give this a little piece of tape right here just to get them out of the way for this. And your first window pane, it's going to match the tan house. Let me grab my... Tan thread. And then we'll use red on the other one. Because they show us different colors, um, it's going to stop. So you don't have to worry about stopping in between. And then ladies, we'll take a break. We'll take a little break. And then we're gonna work on the uh, other couple of things that are on the spreadsheet. The stuff that uses the dissolve away, we'll do that next.
right, this is going to be the red one. I'm going to take that piece of tape that was holding this out of the way. I'm going to move that. And let's put in some red thread for this. And then next week, oh yeah, I was looking at the calendar because I will not be here on Monday. We'll be flying back. So it might be an evening or an afternoon. Let me go ahead and hit start for that. I'm gonna look at my calendar. probably be doing something maybe two to five. But we'll post something. I'll post something on uh, on uh, Facebook probably and then maybe the website. Okay, after these are done, you're going to remove them from the hoop. You're going to trim the excess stabilizer. Do not trim the fabric. Fold the window pocket fabric in half. On the previously pressed line, note, part of the window pane stitch will extend over the fold. And that's okay. So part of it's going to extend over the fold. So let's take that out. We are done with those. Make sure you put these in a nice, safe spot. Don't be like me where it's a, you think it's a safe spot. Make sure it's a safe spot. On page 86 resources, it says to pre-treat the red fabric with vinegar. Do you also do that? You know what? I didn't even read that. So I really appreciate you bringing that to, that to our attention. Um, for me, this is going to hang up on the wall. I guess I should do that just in case. Um, I did not do that, though. But I'm glad that you mentioned that. And I wish I had seen that earlier because I would have mentioned it in my prep video. Um, you know, when I do this project with you, it's my first time doing it. That's why there's often a moment of a duh, mo duh moment where, I, you know, I don't know if I'm doing something totally right um, cause like I said, I'm doing it with you for the first time. Um, yeah, I think that would probably be a good idea if you're planning on washing this. Cause I mean, the last thing you want is for this to bleed. Uh, if you haven't done that already, I mean, I love color catchers and I think they work so well. So, I mean, I would throw a color catcher in with this, even if I treated the fabric or I didn't treat the fabric. This, for me, is going to be something I hang up on the wall, and hopefully nobody gets their sticky, gooey holiday hands all over it. But, you know, it is going to be for the kids. I spot tested a small piece of each red fabric and soaked it for a day, and there was, not, no, there was no bleeding. I didn't test the red velveteen. Yeah, Susan, that's awesome that you did that. So ladies, did you hear that? So Susan uh, spot tested the red fabric, didn't spot test the velveteen. So maybe we could have somebody throw in a piece of velveteen and report back next week and see what happened to that. But maybe it's uh, maybe it's going to be fine. So heat up your iron. You were to trim away the excess um, stabilizer. Fold the window pocket fabric in half and note that part of the window plane stitching will extend over the fold and that's okay. That is what it is meant to do. I guess it would be prettier like that than having it where it looked like this on the pocket. So I think that's why they had you do that. So we're going to go ahead and give this a little press and then we are going to take a little bit of a break. And I want you to go ahead and clip this back with the rest of your stuff so it doesn't get lost. 
put it with the back rest of your stuff for the tan house and for the red house. So here's my tan house. Put this with this. And your red house. Thank you, ladies, for testing it and checking it, making sure everything looks right. I rarely read all the directions. So this is perfect that we do this together and then everyone can help everyone else out. Okay, so we are going to take a 10 minute break and we might go a little bit longer. And if you can't stay that entire time, don't worry about it. Um, the recording will be available for you to watch later. So it is, let's do, it's 12, 1203. Let's get back together at 1213. And that way you can get a drink, run to the ladies room, get ready for the next block. And I will see you back here in 10 minutes.
All right, ladies. Hope you had a good break. I had sometimes I don't give the ladies a break at all, and then they're they're begging for it. I forget. Um, so you got a break. All right, what we're gonna do next, and I figured out what happened. So I was going through my stuff, and I had pulled red. I did pull the right thing. Red house roof A. Okay. Just seeing if I confuse things. I um I was trying to figure out why that piece was miscut. And I I actually do think so it was for Red House Roof A and I had grabbed Red House Part A. So I'll just have to figure out how to swap my fabric. And that's why my piece was two by four and a half instead of two by five. But we're gonna start with mug two part A. And we're using for the next couple of um, stitch outs, we're using wash away. It said there was only one of them where it pointed out that it wanted two layers. And since it pointed that out, it made me go, okay, so they only need one layer for the other one. So that's all I'm hooping up right now. But um, we're gonna do Monk 2. It's gonna be on page 37. So let's go ahead and turn to page 37. 37. If you get lucky, I'll sing for you. Or I guess if you get unlucky. Anyhow, here is um, 37 Mug 2. Cut your stabilizer larger than the embroidery hoop. Hoop the wash away stabilizer only. So I have a piece of wash away right here. And I'll go ahead and hoop it up. We cut so many kits in the store, so we always have stuff that's left over or didn't get used up. So that is what I'm taking, um, what I'm using right now. If you don't have one of these, you should get one of these. I absolutely love this. It is a screwdriver. It's also a hoop tightener. And you never want to crank it, but you just want to turn it so it is not loose enough for you to undo by hand. And um, load the design, we'll do that next. Uh, stitch the mug placement line and place the mug. So it doesn't look like we really need to do any ironing or pressing, so let's just go to the machine. We are gonna load our design. We're using the five by seven hoop. So I'm gonna change my hoop size right here. Let's go five by seven. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit my home button. That'll clear my screen. I think that this is gonna be a dimensional pocket, right? So let's go into cup of chair. We're gonna go dimensional pocket blocks. And this is mug two, which is gonna be right here, the one with the snowflake. Go ahead and load that, set. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right there in the middle. Embroidery. And again, I, if you've done quilts with me, I usually use muslin as my stabilizer, but that's only when I'm doing the quilted blocks that have the muslin, the batting and then the backing fabric. So this is just gonna be stitched right on the dissolve away and um, we are ready to go. Let me slide the hoop on. Let's see what colors we need. I have a white bobbin in there and it is saying, um, use a color that you can see and you know, red's gonna go around this, so why don't we just leave the red that's in there. Stitch the mug placement line, and then we're gonna place the mug fabric down. As far as the mug fabric goes, it wants you to put one of the mug, mug pocket fabric. So it's one of the pieces that's gonna be five and a half by four and a half, and actually all three of these are five and a half by four and a half. We'll just take this one. It says right side up. I'm gonna give it a lot, little shot of spray. And when I say little, I barely any because you don't want it to soak through your stabilizer. 
There we go. We're going to cover that up. I don't know why this looks like it's right side up to me, so I'm going to put that down like that. Next step, it says stitch the mug tack down line. Stitch the mug tack down line in a color you can see. And then you're going to snitch and then you're going to stitch the I don't know why that didn't catch my bobbin thread. I think I'll give it a little brush out in between. Could be just when in doubt, clean everything out. Let me go back to the very beginning of that stitch. And then I want you to get your white thread. White's gonna be next. White's gonna be next for the snowflake detail. So much fun after we do this I mean you have to use the dissolve away because you are gonna be putting the other side of the um, we're gonna be placing another one of these the mud fabrics right side up so then you'll see that when you're tucking stuff into it it's gonna be so cute grow up with anything like this my parents my parents immigrated from Korea in the I guess in the late 60s and um, they just didn't celebrate Christmas over there like they do here so I love advent ca cal calendars the closest to an advent calendar I got with my kids was just doing um, we just do the candy ones they love the ones from Trader Joe's the ones that are, are, I don't even know, are they still, I think they're like a dollar. Could that be? Are they two dollars? This year we did a fancy one that we got at Costco. And that was really fun, but this is, I'm going to hang this, this one up. all the way out and the other part of the pockets on there I will probably press the heck out of this because there are a couple of puckers in it it might be worth it too to just put a piece of shape flex on the back of this
cute snowflake. you to um, turn the hoop to the back. Here we go. Turning it to the back. Place one mug pocket fabric right side up and tape into place. So you want it right side up so it's going to be wrong side to wrong side. And go ahead and tape that in place. Make sure we're covering all the areas. It's really the corners, ladies. It's always those corners. really quick red so we're gonna go ahead and turn that back tape in place stitch the mug rug tack down line and alignment stitch and this is saying uh, color does not make a difference kind of snug this so I'm just gonna leave that white in. And then it wants you to trim the stitch along the top curved edge only. Oops, there you go, sorry about that. and they want you to do it close to the stitch. Then you're gonna turn the hoop to the back and trim the fabric along the top curved edge only. So we're gonna turn, we're gonna trim the top curved led edge only, front and back. We need our snips. Close to the stitch. When I'm trimming close to the stitch, I find that you need curved scissors. That's going to help you get closest. When I want something trimmed as desired, then I use a straight edge set of scissors. I'm going to get rid of that so I can trim it. Top edge. And I love snips. I think snips are the easiest to use. They're easy on the hands. I cut really well with both hands with them, so snips are my favorite go-to. Okay, we're gonna slide it back on. And then it wants you to change bobbin to match your top thread. This is, hang on, I'm gonna look at this and just make sure that That's the red. Okay, so make sure you put in a matching bobbin for this. For some reason, I don't know if you look at the book, ladies, it almost looks like, um, that color almost looks like brown to me, but it's red, right? Will you guys confirm you, you agree that is red? So I'm gonna put in a matching, oh yeah, it's gotta be, well, is it red? It's red, okay. Matching red bobbin. So before we put this on, change your bobbin to match the top thread, and then you're going to stitch the mug rug. Yeah, that's got to be red. It's red. Let's put our red bobbin in. At this store, we care. you can wind your own, but the perfect combination is always going to be a little bit lighter in your bobbin than your upper for embroidery. So I like to use the pre-rounds, and in the store we carry just the Filtech ones. And I think they're 60 weight, but they're my favorite. It just, everything comes out perfect. 
usually. All right, and we're gonna do that satin stitch. And then we're gonna remove it from the block. What you'll do afterwards is you're gonna trim the excess stabilizer to an eighth of an inch from the perimeter of the design. And then you'll remove the excess stabilizer along the top curved edge of the mug. And with a, you'll remove it with a wet cotton swab. I usually just trim it as close to, as close as possible as I can. What I don't like is what snips are you using? Um, if you leave that stabilizer in here and you iron it or anything, it will, it'll kind of suck up and uh, it'll get all wrinkly. So you've got to be careful with it. You either remove it all or you don't remove any of it. If you try to just get some of it, get rid of some of it, it like will distort your project. So just keep that in mind. These are um, these are made by Fomori. And these are the 738Ts. And if there's anything that you want in the store, we usually will give you a class discount when you attend one of our sew alums or something like that. So you can just let me know and I can put a little, a little gift box together for you. But um, I love these. Um, they also, uh, they have them in just like a regular silver too, but who doesn't love the titanium? So cute. All right, and you are done with that. So let's go ahead and let's trim that up. So they want you to remove it from the hoop. You're gonna trim an eighth of an inch from the perimeter of the design. I probably could have moved it down and then used like what was left over in my four by four hoop. I just love using every last bit of my product. Okay. But be careful with this. Like I said, you don't want to do a half. You don't want to dissolve it halfway because it'll pucker and it'll distort your fabric. How do I know? <laughs> and you don't want to steam it either. It'll do the same thing. You either get rid of all of it or you kind of leave it. And then you're going to be getting rid of, just with a Q-tip, you can get rid of just this little bit that's going to be here, just on this edge. We're not going to do that right now. But as per the instructions, you can just wet a Q-tip and kind of just rub it against here and it'll get rid of that dissolve away. The dissolve away is almost like Elmer's glue once you start getting rid of it. So just, you know, just get rid of as much of that as you can. And there's your cutie patootie pocket. If you are going to press this, don't use steam. Just make sure you don't use steam. All right, we are done with that one. Isn't, isn't this fun? We're just moving right along. Go ahead and reclip this with the rest of your stuff so it doesn't get mixed, mixed up and lost. How cute is it going to be against this fabric? That fabric is just adorable. I'm just going to put this with this. And that is ready to go. Next. Next, we're gonna do mitten two part, mitten two part A. Let's grab that. Mitten two, here we go. Here's mitten two. And again, we are gonna go ahead, I think with this one it says, um, hoop the wash away stabilizer only. I don't know why I wrote in here two layers. Did it say it in here somewhere? Mug rug 
I don't even see it in here. Oh, oh, that's right. We're still on this one. Okay, let me turn to the right design. Mitten 2, page 39. Sorry about that. Here we go. There's our mitten. That makes more sense. Right here, it says hoop two layers of the wash away stabilizer only. We're going to be in the 5x7 hoop. Here's my 5x7 hoop. Let me grab my two layers. This is going to work. Is that? Nope. Hang on. Here we go. Okay, here's my two layers. This is left over from Winter Wonderland. Okay. And then once you get it in your hoop, you just want to snug everything. So you pull inward. Don't pull up. Pull in towards the center of the hoop and just get that nice and snug. Okay, here we go. So we have that done. Um, and then we are going to, there is no other prep. Let's go over to the machine. Will this be up to rewatch later? Yes, it will be. So I did have, for some reason, the video just ended, so there's going to be, and I'll edit it so it says it, but there will be um, a cup of chair, so along, week one, part one, and then there'll be a part two. So, because it was, we were just enjoying ourselves and having such a great time, and then all of a sudden, it just, the video ended. So, I was in the middle of, of um, I think I was just pressing my fabric, and then all of a sudden, everyone was gone. And I called my IT guy, Patrick, in a panic, and he said that I just had to stop it and start it over again, and that's what I did. So there's going to be two separate videos, and whatever we don't get done today, I will, um, I always record. All right, let's go embroidery. I mean, it's busy, right, ladies? It's summertime. You can't just be, you can't just be waiting for me to do the sew along. Sometimes you have other stuff you have to do. So we're going to be doing mitten part two. So let's go in here. Just fit me in wherever you can. And then um, you can always watch it later. You can always do it later. So let's make sure we have the right one. So we are doing this one right here, mitten two. So it's going to be this. Make sure mitten two. Go ahead and set it. We're in our five by seven. He's tiny. I did try to see if I could fit these into like different hoopings, but if you look at his size, he was just over that four inches, which bumped us into this hoop. Anyhow, let's go ahead and maybe I'll, maybe I'll, cause I have a fold right here. Maybe I'll just take this design. This is little things I'll do to save. And I'll just move him over. Whoops. Oh, did you see how he went out of the hoop? If I had had my hoop on all the way, I'm going to move him back in the hoop. And then put that down. Then it wouldn't allow me to move that design outside of that hoop. Now he'll just move all the way over and then he stops. And I'm just going to do that and then I can just save the other part. Maybe I can fit that in a 4x4 four four if I had re-hoop this. We'll just see. Okay. It says, load the embroidery file into the machine. Choose, it says, stitch the mitten placement line um, and use a color that you can see. I do not know. I'm going to put my white bobbin back in. Oh, I already did that. I'll leave my red thread in there. And let's just do, since, uh, since I'm using, are we using red fabric? We're using red fabric, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch that placement line. And I did snug my design over to the left, so it's not going to be centered. And then we're going to place the mitten fabric. The mitten fabric is four and a half by five and a half. You should have two of those. We're just getting one for right now. I'm going to give mine a little shot of spray. Remember, I'm spraying. Don't spray at your machine. I have a spray tent I'm using. And I'll just go ahead and snap that down. 
stitch the placement line place your fabric and now we're going to do the tack down and it says do not trim so don't trim this with me I hope some of you are st actually stitching with me next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch the mitten wavy stitch and you're gonna use that that pink it's called taffy so get your taffy thread you we sell the thread sets at the store and if you ever want just individual spools I don't you might have to wait a little while but I can order you individual spools as well so for me, when I looked at the list for uh, Sweet as Pie, because we're doing that pre-order for the thread, I think I had almost all of them. So I just ordered, or actually, you know what? That was one where I needed almost all of them. But I had some of them. So I just ordered, I think I had to order like eight out of the ten. So if you ever need something like that, you can just order them from the store. You have to email me. I don't, those are special orders. I don't keep that in stock. Okay, after we do this, we're gonna do the mitten star detail, which is gonna be white, so just have your white thread ready. The next sew along we're gonna do, we'll probably do two around the same time. We're gonna do Merry Christmas, y'all. And we have kits for that at the store, and that's so cute. I love that one. It ha I have to say, it hasn't been hugely popular, and I don't understand, because I think it's so cute. And then we're gonna do Sweet as Pie. to see how the cup goes on because this is going to be a dimensional pocket and uh, you're going to be able to tuck step into it. time for white get your white thread and you're gonna stitch the star and then the dot detail Oops, sorry about that let me get this out of the way
good time to tidy up. white but the machine calls for gray so it's totally up to you but I think it would be cute to do the gray so I'm going to do the gray for the dots but if you want to leave the white in you can leave the white in or maybe that white is meant to be gray I don't know who's using gray who's using gray who's using white take a little while because it's going to be all those little dots so just let it go and next thing you want to do is you want to get your um you want to get your other piece of red fabric where after it's done doing all the dots we're going to go ahead and place this so grab your other piece of red fabric i you know it's so much work prepping for everything but i love that i can just grab a bundle I can just grab my stuff and it's all bundled there all together. It makes such a huge difference. It's kind of fun too, like prepping everything. I just like put on a good, a good TV show with lots of episodes or I, um, what do I do? Or I, I listen to a good podcast. So it's, it's kind of fun to just uh, do that. I tried to do Audible, ladies, and I just couldn't do it. I I got it, and I don't know. I just didn't like it being read to me, and maybe it was just the book that I chose. Maybe it was just the the um, the person who was reading it. I don't know if any of you do Audible. And then if I'm really feeling impatient, 
I like snip these. This thing will get you. I don't know if it, he's ever gotten you before, but that guy hurts. Because you, you, he goes so fast, you forget he's even there until he gets you. If you don't have a matching bobbin, make sure you're winding one because we're going to need one. I know that's hard to see, but that's going to be kind of like that green color. So make sure you have a matching bobbin for when we get to that. I try to contain myself to like one of these and use them as I go, but then I have another one. But this one has mostly my L bobbins, but I'm not starting to overflow. But I try to keep myself contained and then I'll use my bobbin boat for like just the, the bare necessities, like if I'm working on a project. Okay, so um, now it wants you to Turn the hoop to the back and we're going to place one mitten fabric right side up and we're going to tape them in place. So we're going to turn it to the back side. And remember, again, mine isn't centered because I moved it over to see if I could save this piece over here. That piece of stabilizer. I'm going to tape them down in the corners. I just keep ripping these pieces and using them over. We're going to stitch the mitten tack down. It wants it to be in white, so let me change out my thread again because I did use gray for the dots. What are those little scissors called? Oh, aren't these fantastic? So um, these are OESD, and I think they're, honestly, I can't remember. I think they're, are they like the perfect snips or something like that? I was using, and I love them still, so I have, um, and I'll show them to you in just a second, I have my, uh, um, my side hoppers, and then I have a customer, Miss Joanne, who was like, I really love the perfect snips, so the side hoppers are, and I, I use both of them at this point, I thought I grabbed those to show you, okay. So these are this these are side hoppers and they I call these like their little feet. So these are nice because you can take one of those little feet. Let me see if I can pick here. And you just kind of get them underneath here. And then you just snip one side. 
and then you snip the up. You know what? I haven't used the, I love them equally. Aren't they great? So you get one little foot under, snip that thread, and then you just get them down on the other one. These are, I haven't used these in so long. I forgot how great these are. So either one of them. They're both fantastic. I feel like I had a pair of side hoppers where it cut great on one side and then it didn't cut great on the other side. But this pair that I have is like magnificent. So I love these because you're gonna take it with the little hook and you can scoop them under on one side and then flip them over on the other side and get them this way. So they're both, they're both amazing. Whichever ones you get, I say get both of them. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic? But your jump threads, it's going to carry if it's uh, five millimeters or less. And again, this one, one foot under, and then just get the other side. I'll just have to get a thread to clean those all up. But those are um, side hoppers, perfect snips. These are OESD and I don't even know. These are just Tooltron. Yeah. And I think they're both on our website. Okay. Um, okay, put that down underneath there. I put my white thread in. It is threaded. I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. After we do this, we're going to trim the fabric on the top edge of the mitten only close to the stitch line. And then we're going to turn the fabric over and then we do the same thing on the back side. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim here. We're going to turn it down to the back side and we're going to trim on the back side too. I know it makes such a difference having like the best, like just having the right stuff. So on this side, I like to use my snips and it looks like they just kind of made it a straight line. You want to go close to the stitch just on the very top. Don't trim around the whole thing. Just go right across as though there was imaginary line. And we can do this side too. Like I have all these dangling off the edge of my um, my table, and when Momo was a puppy, he would go. He doesn't do it anymore, but he would pull them off and eat them. I'd be like, "Oh no!" So I just threw it all away, because tape cannot be good for a puppy's belly, right? He used to also, and he doesn't do. And this is such a relief. He used to pull pins out of my pin cushion, and I saw him do that. And my heart, like my stomach, went into an instant knot, and he just just spit it out. But he doesn't do that anymore. The things that puppies do. Okay, so um, we trim that. Now we're gonna go ahead stitch, trim the fabric. Now we're in step number seven. Step number seven says. Stitch the cuff placement line on the stabilizer. Here's your picture right here. Um, and place one cuff fabric right side up. Tape in place, turn the hoop to the back and tape one cuff um, right side up on the back side. Okay, so let's do our placement line. Color does not make a difference. I'm just gonna leave the white in there. You're gonna get your cuffs. How cute are these cuffs? So you should have two of them. I'm going to give mine, I'm not going to tape it, I'm going to give mine a little shot of spray to the back. I'm done with the, um, let me see, do I have my stripes right? Yep. Because I, I think it said this was dimensional. I mean, uh, directional. Not dimensional. Directional. Oh, shoot. What am I doing? Hang on. I got to put my other piece on the back side. So I'll just go back over those stitches, but I'm going to take this off, turn it to the back side. I'm going to give this a little shot of spray. Actually, this one I'm going to tape because I don't want those corners turning under. I'm going to put it like this. It wants it right side up. We'll give it some tape on the corners.
There we go. Put it back. Take a peek under, make sure everything looks good. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the beginning of that. Here we go. This is going to be this is going to be the cuff tack down. And then it says to This is step number 8. Trim the fabric on the top edge of the cuff and the bottom edge of the cuff only close to the stitch line. Okay, I can do that. Top edge of the cuff. So it's telling us to do it just the very top here, top here on the front, and then top here, bottom here on the back. So just imagine there is a long straight line and I'm gonna go, let me change my view so you can see that. And then the bottom. Ooh, aren't you curious? I'm curious why we're not doing the sides. Oh, you know why? We've got a satin stitch, that's why. Okay. Well, I didn't do, I didn't do a very good job centering this one, did I? Hi, you see all my flaws when I'm filming live. When I'm uh, pre-recording videos, then I, I, um, I'll make a note. I go, I'll go, oh, at two minutes and 12 seconds. Take out that part where I looked really confused or I'll splice stuff together. Patrick makes it, it's movie magic, right? Top and bottom close to stitch. All right, I'm gonna slide that back on. So we just did turn the hoop to the back, trim the fabric. Place a small piece of medium tear away to the back of the mitten covering the cuff. So we need a piece of medium tear away. Let me grab some. I love tear away. I don't know about you ladies, but when I started embroidering, I, uh, here we go. Got a good piece right here. I, um, that's all I used. I didn't know that there was anything else. I just used tear away for everything. Because I was uneducated. Now that I know, I have like 80 million different rolls, but in the beginning, I just used tear away. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time, make sure I got it right, but tape a small piece of medium tear away to the back of the mitten covering the cuff. Okay, let me do that. So, oh, I can already see why that might be important. Change the bobbin. How about I read all the directions? Change the bobbin to match the top. If you ever pop this off like I just did, it is not a big deal. And just go ahead and just pop them back on. It goes on really easy. Nice and easy. Okay, I changed my bobbin and stitched the cuff top and bottom satin outline and removed the project from the hoop. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that back on. We're gonna get that green, that's so wonderful. And I think we're almost done with the mitten and then we can go on to the house. It is 104, if you've gotta go, I totally understand, but I think I am just gonna finish up 
we I always put three hours and sometimes that's enough time rarely is it enough time I mean next week if you look at our agenda for next week we've got a lot going on there so I might pre-record some of the things that are at the end it's gonna be so cute this mitten and then once we're done with this we're gonna just remove it from the hoop We'll trim the excess stabilizer an eighth of an inch from the perimeter of the design. And that's all it says. It doesn't say to use a Q-tip or anything, but you probably want to. ladies. I think you're doing a great job. Actually, I have no idea. <laughs> but I hope you're doing a great job. I'm sure you are. A lot of you are seasoned pros and some of you are brand new and I think it's like it'll be fun for you to do this with us because uh, we've made a lot of mistakes and hopefully we can help you avoid them. Okay, we're going to take this, pop it out of the hoop, trim it an eighth of an inch, just like the directions say. But I think you're going to need a Q-tip because you're going to want to get rid of, you're going to want to get rid of the, any of the excess stabilizer that's on there. So I'm going to move this over here. Let's read our directions one more time. I'm always scared I'm going to give you the wrong directions. We just did this step right here. Remove the project from the hoop. And all it says is trim excess stabilizer an eighth of an inch from perimeter of design. But I think if there's anything hanging out there, you're going to want to get rid of that. We'll see what we're left with over here on this side too. Look at all of this. I'm going to use that. Use that sticky tape. This is tear away so we can just get rid of that. I think that was just so stuff wouldn't turn under. It says don't cut the fabric. Don't cut the fabric yet. You know Ta-da! And then I can use that for my next 4x4. Four four. Okay. And then this here says an eighth of an inch. Just don't cut those stitches. That's what you want to not do. And I think you are going to want to get rid of that, like just here on the edge, but we can wait until later and see what directions they give us. Is that so cute? That's going to be so cute because it's going to go down on your project and it'll probably have a satin stitch and then this will be finished on the inside and it'll just be adorable. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick this with, that goes with mitten two right here. And I'm going to put that away. We are on to, so we've gone ahead and done all of this. We're going to do Blue House Part A. That's going to be on page 47. Let's get our book. Page 47. And it says um, one layer of wash away and you need the shape form interfacing um, and a matching blue bobbin. So I'm going to go ahead and put in one layer of the wash away. Let me do that first. Just 
going to use this and then I'll move it over. Okay. Sometimes I'll just leave it. I mean, this isn't on the roll, but I'll leave it on here and I'll just hoop over here, do my design, and then I'll unhoop and then move it over so you can really, really use as much of that stabilizer as possible. So he is in there. And then it says, um, you're going to need, so it calls for the, what is that called again? It's the shape form interfacing. And it wants you to verify the size. So your shape form interfacing, is this it? Where is my shape form interfacing? Sorry ladies, that is the one thing I needed to put together with this. I just brought my kit home for the first time last night. Okay, here we go. So it's gonna be that kind of hard stuff and uh, you need a one and a quarter inch by two and three quarters. So, one and a quarter by three by two and three quarters. I mean, I am, I don't know about you ladies, I'm just, what am I doing? Two and three quarters. So I need one and a quarter. And then I'll cut it down. And it wants you to confirm it. And you just need one piece of this but it does need to be perfect. And that is two and three quarters, right? Here we go. All right. Sorry for not having that. And this put in a very special place because you don't want to lose it. I'm gonna put mine in my... Okay. So we have our stabilizer hoop to verify your door structure shape form interfaces is exactly one and a quarter by two and three quarters. Stitch the door structure placement line. So let's go ahead and load the design on the machine and then we'll get this stitched out. And then here is the fabric that goes with it. I am gonna go ahead and bring you over to the machine. Let's slide this on. And I think in my instructions, let me make sure, but I think I have us doing, we're gonna do both doors. So if you look right here, actually, and it says do both doors from the blue house and the red house in the same four by four hooping, if only I would read my instructions. Let me grab my four by four hoop. I'll just be right back. I have that nice piece that I saved from the other, from the other one. Because these are going to be tiny. The doors are tiny. Here's this. All right, here's my four by four. This is my little extra piece from before. Let's check our bobbin before I slide this on. Um, and it is not saying anything specific about a bobbin color, so I'm just gonna take this one out and I'm gonna put my white back in. White's always my go-to. This was that piece that was in between my um, 
in between my mitten that I was able to save. All right, so we're gonna load in this door. So let's go ahead and go over to the machine. And this is our last tubing, ladies. I think we did great. And I think time-wise, we did pretty well, too. I mean, sometimes we really, really run over. But I always know that it's usually going to be more than the time that we have allotted. Here's the blocks. There's our doors. So we're going to do this door and set. And then let's go ahead and uh, let's choose our hoop size too so I know how much room I have to work with, how far I can move those doors over. Edit, move, nope, move. We'll move him all the way to the left. Whoops, now you can see you're outside of that hoop so that's why it's so important to choose that. Okay, add, let's add the other door. House block, red house, set. Look how t tiny he is. Edit, and you could hit any of these. Actually, all of these have the move key, move key behind them. I'm gonna move them all the way over. Perfect, right, better than doing each one separately in a four by four hooping, we can do them together. So we're gonna go ahead and say embroidery. Um, we can color group if you want. Let's just go ahead and color group. We're going to go right here. That's going to do all our applique and placement all at once. We're just going to have to pay attention to the instructions. Um, and I'm going to hit layout again so it shows us our color first. We're going to read our instructions. Um, because that shape form, that stuff that I just cut, page 57, let me just get mine for the other one. Page 57 on this one, it needs to be 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths. So just give me one second. I'm just going to cut that so that's all done. 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths. 7 eighths. Let me look at that again. 7 eighths and 1 and 7 eighths. So we'll go one, seven eighths, and then I want this one, one and seven eighths. Here we go. It's just a little itty bitty door. I wonder if it'll fit this way. Nope, too small. One and a seven eighths. Okay, and that is the red house. So here's my red house. All right. So let's do blue house. The first thing it says is it is going to, and it says use a visible color stitch the door structure placement line and place the door structure shape form interfacing covering the inner placement <coughs> sorry about that <coughs> hang on Hi, Bob. sage is here visiting <laughs> oh sorry he won't he'll be fine sorry about that guys remember i told you yeah just yeah sorry bob sage is visiting all right so we are going to do a, whoop, watch your step up, um, placement line. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit start. And then after that, it's probably going to do the placement line for the other door. So we're going to be switching back and forth between page 47 and 57. Because I color grouped, it's going to do that all at once. That's Momo's special way of saying hello. And I'm going to give both of those 
I'm gonna give both of those a little shot of spray. You're going to place this on the inner part of the door. So make sure you get on the inside. You don't want to be on the outer line. There we go. All right. So we are... And they had you put down a little piece of tape, but we have this spray down, so sh we should be good with that. So place the door structure shape form interface and covering the inner placement line, but not exceeding the outer placement line. Stitch the door structure tack down line. So now it's gonna go ahead and tack it down. Um, color doesn't make a difference. I'll just keep leaving that green in there. And I might hold it down a little bit just to get it to stay. Take him out. I will buy it. Okay. Mom, do you want this? It's Grand Central here, guys. Okay, so on this one, it's telling us to place one door fabric right side up. So if you look right here, the door fabric is your blue fabric that's going to be three by four. So let's go ahead and grab that and make sure we have the right piece. You might want to measure it because there's so many. Three by four. And that one is exactly three by four. Um, and then for the red one, we did all of the same stuff and now it wants you stitch the door, stitch the door placement line. Stitch the door placement line. Oh, I didn't do that yet. Let me do that step. Okay, and then I'll grab the fabric. But that is just going to be where the door fabric is going to go. So uh, color doesn't make a difference. This is step number three, I think, in both of them. Kind of just little outline. We did the tack down, but this is going to be the door placement. Or did I do that and I'm losing track? Let me see. That is, I'm looking at my steps. Placement, stitch down. No, that's right. Okay. So I'm going to give this a little shot of spray and we'll place that. And then for the red, the red needs 57. The door, the door is going to be... Looks like the door is the tan fabric and it is two by three. Let me grab that. Okay, so these are the fabrics that you're gonna have. This should be three by four and this should be two by three. I'm gonna give them each a lot of sh little shot of spray. was a lot. Okay, we're going to put this one down right here. And we'll put this one down right here. So cute, that itty bitty door. 
All right, and then it's going to do a tack down, and let me see if the color makes a difference. Color does not make a difference. Stitch the door tack down line. Do not trim. So I'm just going to hit start. We're going to do the tack down line. And then color is going to start making a difference. That's so cute because I think those doors are gonna swing open. All right, now it's asking for, um, that's teal. I think that's gray. So for the first one, we are not trimming again. So don't trim and remove your tape if you're using tape. Stitch the inner door outline. So stitch the inner door outline. So that is gonna be step number five right here. And it's just like a running stitch around that. This to me looks like gray. So I'm gonna use gray. Cause it is, your colors are gonna make a difference now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my gray thread in. I know it got a little crazy there just then. My daughter showed up. I didn't even know she had left. And then, um, my best friend from middle school lives in the Bay, and her dad is here, lives here now, so she came up to see him. So they both showed up, and then Momo always likes to give his, his nice, warm Momo welcome. And it's gonna stop for me to put the teal in, so I'm gonna get my teal next. It didn't jump over to this. It is staying over here and it wants the uh, doorknob. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in this color. It's not jumping to the other one. If you find that confusing, look at number one, your screen. Cause I was thinking, oh, is it gonna do the red outline? But it's showing me the little doorknob right there. And then you can look at where it's stitching on your fabric. If you find it confusing, just do one at a time. You can do them in the same hooping and just don't color group. And then it'll do one entire door and then it'll switch to the other one. It can get confusing. So this is gonna be the doorknob on the blue door. And then it looks like it's gonna continue on with this door and do the inner door detail. This is the doorknob fill. Yep, it's staying on this door and you can look at your screen. It's showing you what it's stitching out. I'm gonna go ahead and put my white in. Although, yeah, it's showing it white on my screen. this inner door detail we're going to turn the hoop to the back and we're going to place the other door fabric right side up and tape it in the corner so grab another one of these um you're going to grab another one of these blue pieces and you're going to grab another one of the tan pieces so the magic piece
go ahead and tape that corner in place and turn it over put the blue fabric down they don't really overlap so it's nice as long as you snug one all the way to one side and the other one to the other Okay, so we just, what do we do? We stitch the inner door detail, that's step number seven. I'm gonna slide this back on. Then we turn the hoop to the back and we place the door fabric right side up and we tape the corner since the fabric is, uh, doesn't really have a right or a wrong, doesn't, you don't have to be too careful. We taped it in the corner and then we're going to stitch the door, tack down line and hinge line um, they want you to use a visible color, which I have white in, and it's totally visible on the blue fabric, so I'm just going to leave it. Do not trim the fabric between hinge lines. So let's go ahead and stitch that out. Stitch the door, tack down line, and hinge lines. Okay, so we're gonna stitch from the front and from the back. And you're gonna go ahead and trim all the way around here, but not in this area in between the hinges. Then we're gonna trim it to turn it to the back and we're gonna trim all the way around here, but not in between this hinge area right here. Let's go for it. All right, ladies, let's get trimming. So I'm gonna go ahead and imagine there's a straight line going all the way across here. It's funny when your kids have have can drive and they have some money in their pocket. Suddenly they, they're just gone and you don't even know where they are. And you're filming. <laughs> okay, how cute is this? I'm super excited about this door. We are going to trim... around the door in between the hinges Just like that. All right. Now, what does it want us to do? So we just went ahead and we did all of this trimming right here. Um, change bobbin to match the top thread and we're gonna stitch the door satin outline and remove the block from the hoop. So we need to have a matching blue bobbin. And let me grab mine. Let me grab a bobbin and I'm just using this blue right here. So we're going to put in a matching bobbin and we're going to stitch all the way around. Let me take this out. this in. Hopefully that's enough. And let's put this in the top. And then we're going to remove the block from the hoop. Well, no, we're not because after we do this, then we're going to finish up the other one. So we'll finish up the tan door. Okay, here 
Here we go. Satin stitch time. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do all the things that we need to do the, this drawer. So go ahead and turn to page 57. 57. And we're gonna start with the inner door outline and door knob fill, which is gonna be in red. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my blue thread, my blue bobbin. Let's go ahead and put some red thread in there. We're almost done. Nice job, ladies. If you didn't get this done with us, get it done. Because I would love for you to just stay on schedule. I don't want this to be, it's a, it's a, I would just call this is like, um, this project's like an elephant. One bite at a time. So, get it done this week so you can um, stay on schedule and stay on track with us. I mean, some of you are already done. I can't believe how many people have gotten it and they're done stitching it. After we stitch this, we're going to turn the hoop to the back and we're going to place the door fabric right side up and tape the corners. Look how cute these are. Oops, got to do the doorknob. And again, next week isn't going to be on Monday. It's most likely going to be on Tuesday, probably Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to slide this off. I'm going to put this on. We're going to cover this over and taper up. Just the little corners. Don't you just love this transport tape? It's like the best ever. And I'm going to take this out. Forgot I even had that in there. Let me put my white back in. That's cotton.
I have pre-wound uh, cotton and polyester. You want to not use cotton in your bobbin when you're doing embroidery because it can cause the upper thread to break or you got to really slow it down and kind of baby it sometimes. All right. Um, stitch the door tack down line and hinge lines. I'm asking for that in white. So let me go ahead and put our white thread in. trim we're gonna trim just like we did before we're gonna trim around but we're gonna leave that hinged area and then we'll stitch the outline stitch we've got that little hinge right here which is so cute. Aren't you so excited for these doors? So uh, I'm saying obviously, but now I get it. You know, as the project's coming together, I'm like, oh, these little doors are gonna swing open and you're gonna be able to leave a little present in there. You're gonna have the little boxes that can unzip. Back to the back, we'll do the same thing. Here's our hinge. is done change out your bobbin can you believe I actually told you to change it out before you slid the hoop on because it seems like that's what I really like to do We're going to do our outline stitch, our gorgeous outline stitch of our gorgeous door. Oh my goodness, is this going to be our easiest day? This might be our easiest day. I think next week's going to be a big one. All right, not to scare you ladies. I mean, it's going to be a big, wonderful one. It's like something amazing to look forward to. It's going to be big. So we're going to do this satin stitch outline. Then we're going to remove it from the block, from the hoop. Um, trimming instructions. Trim your excess stabilizer an eighth of an inch from the edge of the design. Remove excess stabilizer along the edge of the door with a wet cotton swab and allow to dry. And that's it. We are done with all our A's are done. So you don't have to worry about working on it and going, oh no, I need the A block. All your A blocks are done so you can just proceed. Let's talk about next week. Next week again, we are going to get together on Tuesday, not Monday. Um, and we are going to be working on these blocks. So uh, they're blocked. It's section one. We're going to be working on section one. The filler blocks. So your filler blocks are the little squares and they do need to be sewn together before class. So these are your filler blocks right here. So you can see like this right here is going to be one section. Or actually, I think it goes to there. Let me turn to your section one page so you can see what I'm talking about. But make sure all your filler blocks are sewn together. 
So these two, those need to be sewn together. The top four, those need to be sewn together. Um, this is a filler block all on its own. This is a filler block all on its own. And these two. Um, actually, so I didn't know how many people had a nine and a half by um, nine and a half or nine and a half by 14. So this filler block, this two by two is done by itself. And then this block is done by itself too. Because if you sew them together and we're using the quilting designs, it bumps us out of the eight by eight hoop. Not a big deal because I'm combining all of these. If you look at your instructions, this is what we're gonna start out with. We're gonna start out with the five by seven. We're gonna do the steam. We'll rehoop for the snowflake, uh, the present. And then, where did I do the filler blocks? Oh, right here. Load the seam, touch embroidery. Oh, we're gonna add, we're gonna do the steam with most of the filler blocks. And then we're gonna add that last filler block. It gets put in somewhere. I can't remember where. But I'll look at this over again. I did load these all into the, um, the machine just to make sure everything fit. We're done with this, guys. So we are done with our two doors. We're gonna just trim them out. So you do have a little bit of prep to do before our, um, before our next get together. Delicious Diamond World Recipe. Hello, Delicious Diamond World Recipe. Okay. And look, I have all of this I can use for my next one. So, don't trim those stitches, but you want to get close to them. And then you're going to use a little swab, a little cotton swab. And then get rid of all of the little excess. You want it to be pretty clean. And fold these two back. Okay, so for homework, I want you to clean up all of these A blocks, making sure they're all ready so you don't have to think about it and that we get to, um, we start the other ones and you're like, oh no, I never, I never cleaned those off. So you're going to clean those up. You're going to get all your filler blocks. Your filler blocks should be all um, stitched together for block for uh, so long week two. So those are almost ready. And um, everything should be grouped up. So you're gonna have your blue house. The only thing I haven't put in here yet was my foam. I hadn't cut my foam yet. But I'm gonna put my blue door back with my blue house and my tan door back with my red house. Oop. And we will all send something out and just confirming the time, but we will be getting together next Tuesday, ladies. And um, hope you had fun today. I think we got a, a good start going. Uh, if you need a spreadsheet, just let me know or you can get it on our Facebook page. And next week, this is what we will be working on. And, um, and I did write that little outline that's going to tell you what we're going to start with. And uh, these notes might not make sense to you, but they'll make sense to you as we go. But we're going to start with the 5 by 7 and the steam and the filler blocks. That's what we're going to begin with. And all your other information is here. I, these are going to be quilt blocks with batting, with quilting. I am going to use muslin as my, um, as my stabilizer. And yeah, I think that's it for now. If you have any questions, just reach out. Otherwise, thanks for joining and I will see you next Tuesday.